Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. We here at Covenant are connecting people in this hectic world to Jesus. We are thankful that you are joining us this morning via, for worship via Facebook Live or, uh, or also uh, YouTube or our FM radio ch channel, so um, outside our sanctuary. Happy Pentecost! We hope that you received your red pinwheel for Pentecost from one of our Covenant staff members this week. Red is, of course, the church color for Pentecost. Uh, Josh, Ashley, Connor, Knox, and I spread out all over all the whole county, including Stafford. You guys live in a lot of places to deliver pinwheels and just connect with you all. Uh, just as the wind makes the pinwheel move, the Spirit, Holy Spirit blows the breath of God into our lives. If we missed you, please let Knox or me know. Uh, we'd be happy to deliver one to you. I don't know about going all the way to Virginia Beach to the Sutherlands, but we could think about it. Road trip. Anyway, this next Sunday we will celebrate the Lord's Supper together. This is the uh, fifth Sunday of the month. Then after the service, we will have a congregational meeting via Zoom to nominate and vote for new officers. So we need more of you than the usual suspects to join us uh, for that um, congregational meeting so we have a quorum. After that, we'll give an update on how Covenant's finances have been through the end of April. Hopefully, you got a survey this week. There is a task force from Session which is gathering information about in-person worship. We ask that you fill it out and you have until Friday to do so. Changing direction a little bit. I don't know about you, but the events this past week have been deeply troubling with the murder of George Floyd. Uh, it's been heartbreaking. It's uh, brought me to tears, made me very upset. The question was asked at the prayer service on Thursday night, asking, what can we do? Well, I would like to invite any of you who would like to, to join with me in reading this book. It's going to come out backwards via your, um, it's, but it's called Be the Bridge, Pursuing God's Heart of Racial Reconciliation by Latasha Morrison. It's an excellent book. Josh and I started reading it this winter prior to the pandemic. Um, I understand that the book is selling out. No surprise there, though not the ebook, obviously. If you would like to order one or you don't have the money in order to order one, we can arrange that. If you would like to join me, if you can't find one online, let me know. Um, you can order one. I hear that the delivery is going to be the middle of June, and we can just copy the first couple of chapters till yours comes. So don't let uh, the lack of finding one be um, the reason you don't join us for um, conversation and reading together. Um, I think it's important conversation for us to have as a congregation about racial reconciliation. Those are the announcements I have this morning. Would you join with me in the call to worship? But here on this mountain, God of the angels' armies will throw a feast for all the people of the world. A feast of finest foods, a feast with vintage wines, a feast of seven courses, a feast lavish with gourmet desserts. And here on this mountain, God will banish the pall of doom hanging over all peoples. The shadow of doom darkening all nations. Yes, he'll banish death forever. And God will wipe the tears from every face. He'll remove every sign of disgrace. From his people, wherever they are, yes, God says so. Okay. 
the earth is awakening, the mountains are trembling, the oceans hold their breath for this holy moment. The heavens stand to their feet as life like a river springs up from a thirsty land. Collision of God and man And holy, holy is the cry Of saints and sinners reconciled Sing, sing it out, let the earth resound For the King is here, the King is here Shout, shout it out for the hope we found For the King is here, the King is here The darkness is breaking now Drown out in the sea of stars Your church is rising up Fire that can't be stopped And holy, holy is the cry That months and sinners reconcile Sing, sing it out, let the earth resound For the King is here. The King is here. Shout, shout it out for the hope we found. For the King is here. The King is here. And holy, holy is the cry that floods the heavens, fills the skies. From the earth unto the throne, eternal praise to Him below. Sing, sing it out, let the earth resound, for the King is here, the King is here. Shout, shout it out, for the hope we found, for the King is here, the King is here. You're the resurrection that we waited for. You buried the night and you came with the morning. You're the King of heaven. The praise is yours. The longer the quiet, the louder the chorus. Oh. Song. Let hallelujahs flow like a river We're coming back to life Reaching towards the light Your love is like springtime You're the living water God, we thirst for you the dry and the barren will flower and bloom. You're the sun that's shining. You restore my soul. The deeper you call us, the deeper we'll go. We will sing a new song. And death is dead and gone with the winter. We will sing a new song. Let hallelujahs flow like a river. We're coming back to life and reaching towards the light. 
Your love is like springtime. Come tend the soil. Come tend the soil of my soul. And like a garden, and like a garden I will grow. I will grow. We will sing a new song, cause death is dead and gone with the winter. We will sing a new song, and hallelujahs flow like a river. We're coming back to life and reaching towards the light. Your love is like springtime. If we say we have no sin, we are not telling the truth. We deceive ourselves. And we really become strangers to God. But if we confess our sins, God, God is faithful. God is just. And God is willing to forgive our sins and cleanse us, make us completely clean through his righteousness found in Christ. Would you join with me in the prayer of confession, first together and then silently? Let us pray. Welcoming God, you invite all people to your feast, but we decline to come. You invite all people into your kingdom, but we try to keep others out. You forgive us all through your son, but we condemn those who are not like us. Have mercy on us, Lord when we seek to be holier than you. Help us to hear your invitation and to know that we are all welcomed just as we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friends, who is in a position to judge us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for, for us. Even today, Christ prays for us. Anyone who confesses their sin is a new creation in Christ. The old is gone. It's past. It's over. The new has come. Friends, believe the good news, for in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And that concludes our worship service this morning. Oh, you guys. Ah, hard to follow that one. Wow, thank you. Thank you, both Ashley and Connor. Amazing. Mm. Okay, I've got a question for you this morning. I want you to imagine a big meal where you could eat anything that you wanted, any food that your heart desired. The food would not affect your cholesterol levels nor your diabetes. It wouldn't make your allergies flare up or cause you to have acid reflux later. What would you eat? Would it be something that you once had at a fancy restaurant? Would it be something that a loved one used to cook, maybe who's passed? What would you eat? Okay, guys, I'm asking. Your mom, Tom Anders' mom's pot roast. A Philly cheesesteak? Maryland blue crab. Maryland blue crab? Pecan pie. Pecan pie. I would have my mother's blackberry pie, and I would have king crab that we had at a restaurant in Ushuaia, Argentina, a long time ago. That's what I'd have. Knox, what would you have? Chocolate. Oh, my chocolate cream pie. <laughs> I'm kind of sick of that, but that's okay. It's your dream, your dream meal. Now he's going to be bothering me to make it. All right. In the Judeo-Christian heritage, the theme of a great meal is present from the Old Testament onwards. The meal was a sacred meal with God. Psalm 23 tells of the Lord preparing a table, and the only people who prepared Table, tables in the Old Testament or New Testament were women. So it's a female image of God. Uh, the Lord preparing a table for the psalmist. Isaiah 25, our call to worship, talks about a wonderful meal for all peoples of the world with seven courses, vintage wines, gourmet desserts that the Lord of hosts prepares. It will be an eschatological meal, meaning that it will be a meal at the end of time. It's also a meal of salvation when the Lord will gather people from east and west and north and south together with the heavenly host. There will be no more death or suffering uh, because the Lord will take all the darkness away. Now, the prophet Isaiah included all the people of the wor world. But if you were to go to the Targum, which is the Aramaic translation of the prophet Isaiah, this passage is a meal of judgment for the Gentiles. And if you read Enoch, Enoch's in the Apocrypha. He wrote uh, 600 years after o Isaiah. This heavenly banquet would only include God's chosen, the Israelites, the Gentiles being excluded. And if you were to move a little further and look at the Qumran community, that's the community they believe. They're not, now they've kind of changed it, but that the Dead Sea Scrolls come from. This heavenly banquet would be one that was for only the worthy that they could attend, and it would be, they would do so by rank. So from the time of Isaiah to Jesus' parable that we are going to study this morning, the theme of the heavenly banquet had moved from an inclusive banquet with all the people of the world to one that was only for those who lived up to certain rules and regulations. It was, there was no grace, only law. As we continue our series on Luke's gospel, we're in chapter 14. And Jesus was having a Sabbath meal with a leader of the Pharisees, the religious renewal Jewish mo movement of the first century AD. He'd already started making people pretty uncomfortable as they reclined Greco-Roman style. You know, you ate kind of on your stomach or on your side around a low ta table. He'd healed a man who had swollen joints. That was already forbidden on the Sabbath. He commented on how people were jockeying for the best positions at the table, which was at the center 
of the table because that was the position of importance. He'd also said that meals or banquets shouldn't be only for important people, but that when one had a meal, one was to invite someone who never got invited out. It was clearly an uncomfortable meal. So let's look at Luke chapter 14, verses 15 through 24. One of the dinner guests, on hearing this, said to Jesus, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now, the guest was quoting the prophet Isaiah's prophecy of that heavenly banquet, and the guest was trying to be an appeaser. This was a statement to try to break the tension. And it was probably designed so that Jesus would just shut up and not keep putting his foot in his mouth as most of the other guests thought he was doing. After the guests made that statement, blessed is anyone who will break bread in the kingdom, eat bread in the kingdom of God. The appropriate response was for someone else to offer the following prayer. O oh Lord, may we be among the righteous and be counted without blemish, worthy to sit with the men of renown on that great day. That was what was supposed to be said in response. <laughs> but instead, Jesus told the following parable. Verse 16. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. Now this was a well-known man in the East, Middle Eastern community. The banquet was to honor friends and colleagues. And as was the custom, Invitations had been sent out earlier, and everyone had accepted. Verse 17. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. Now, on the day of the banquet, the livestock was killed according to how many people had accepted the invitation. A sheep if there were 15 to 35 people coming, a calf if there were 35 to 75 people invited. Since no one had refrigeration, the meat had to be eaten on the same day that it was prepared. So by evening, when all the food was prepared, a servant was sent out to the invited guests who had already accepted to tell them that the food was ready and come on, dinner served. Verse 18, but they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Now, the original hearers of this parable would have known that that was a bold-faced lie. As Dr. Kenneth Bailey, the great Middle Eastern scholar on parables, wrote, no one buys a field in the Middle East without knowing every square foot of it like the palm of his hand. It would be like the paper-thin excuse today of, I've just bought a house sight unseen, I didn't even see pictures of it, and I need to go have a look at it to see what kind of neighborhood it's in. The first invited guest was intentionally insulting the host with a very flimsy excuse. He was saying that the piece of land was more important than his relationship to the host. Verse 19, another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another lie, all testing of oxen all testing of any type of thing like that would take place before the bidder made an offer, not afterwards. And the second invitee is saying that, really, the animals are more important than my relationship to you. Verse, 19, verse 20, another said, I've just been married, and therefore I cannot come. You know, now this sounds like a pretty good excuse except 
the wedding wouldn't have been recently because most small towns couldn't support two great banquets close together. It would be like saying, you know, I cannot come to this evening banquet because my wife and I have been only married over a year and we need to spend some time together. It's a flimsy excuse. And if you notice, this person doesn't even ask to be excused. Once again, it's an insult against the hosts. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. And then the owner of the house became angry. The host is angry because he's been publicly humiliated in front of the whole village. He realizes that the original guests think that the party cannot go on without them. But what does the host do instead? He does the unexpected. The, and he said to a slave, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. The host invites everyone who looks like they need a square meal. As Dr. Pe Bailey writes, the poor were not invited to banquets. The blind did not go out to inspect fields. The lame did not test oxen, and the maimed did not get married. The seemingly unworthy become the worthy. And the slave said, sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. And then the master said to the slave, go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. Now, the host extends the invitation to those beyond the community. He extends the invitation to who? The foreigners. That would have shocked the original hearers. Foreigner? Do you mean the Gentiles? Do you mean the Romans? Verse 24, for I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. The original guests will not be able to show up at the last moment and say, oh, change of plans. I guess I can make it after all. They've already had their chance. They've already been extended the invitation, and they have refused. There will be no great banquet for them. I love this parable. I really do. OK, practical applications. Number one, God extends an invitation to all to attend the great banquet. Now's the time. Don't lose the opportunity. Don't make excuses. Come to the table. Accept the invitation. Have you ever invited people for a dinner, gotten all the food together, and then had your guests not show up? And not because of some family emergency or suddenly getting the 24-hour flu. This happened once to us with the Dodsons. An hour beforehand, well, I was just very, very sick. They would not want to have to see me. But you know, it's not because of something like that. It's because they just forgot. It's hurtful. I had it happen to me years ago, and I thought, well, I won't be inviting them over anytime soon again. If you have ever felt that way, can you imagine how God might feel? Just a teeny bit. God has poured out God's love to us with abundance. I mean, good grief, look at this beautiful world. God has given God's self to us through his son, through the Holy Spirit that we remember today on Pentecost. And God invites us to that banquet, to the table, and so many, even us occasionally, say, oh, you know, I forgot about you, God. I'm sorry. I guess I was just too busy. Maybe some other time. If there is anything that this pandemic has taught is that life is precious and life is short. 
So let us accept this great invitation from God and join in the great banquet. Second practical application. The invitation is for all people. This is the Lord's table. It is not ours. And the Lord invites everyone. There is no privilege here. The invitation is open to anyone, regardless of race, nationality, sexuality, cultural, social, moral, or immoral backgrounds. We are all God's children, and the invitation is open wide right now. This week I was listening on a Zoom call to African-American Presbyterian pastors who pastor churches in Metro DC. The incidents of this past week have shown again the work that needs to be done in terms of dismantling racism and bringing about racial reconciliation. And one of my colleagues, Reverend Eleanor Giddings Ivory said, we are all made in the image of God. We are all made in the image of God. All of us are made in the image of God. And our Lord Jesus invites us to the table, whatever your background is, whoever you are. All we have to say is yes to Jesus. My sisters and brothers, it is so easy to want to exclude people who think differently than us, who may vote differently than we do, who have different values and perspectives than we do. The invitation does not exclude our enemies any more than it ex does our friends. And how do we as Christians help open that invitation so that not only people we are comfortable with, but people who are different than us may be at the bottom of the pile, maybe at the bottom of a knee, at the end of the line, find good news. For all of us need a savior, all of us. Third practical application. Where do you see yourself in this parable? Are you going to tell God you can't make it to the banquet using your best or not even your best excuse? You know, participation is not possible at a distance. As one scholar wrote, those who wish to enjoy must come in. Listen, there's no social distancing going on here. We're not eating outside with you know, 50% capacity. You have to come in. They can't have their portion sent out for them to enjoy while they busy themselves with other things. In other words, there is no takeout in the kingdom of God. You have to come in. You have to sit at the table. Don't worry about the pandemic. Or maybe you are one who has been down on your luck or has never been invited to anything, and you are thrilled at the invitation. You cannot believe that God could possibly mean you. You are startled by the invitation and are being gently pulled by the arm to the banquet. Grace is unbelievable. It really is. Or maybe you realize that since you ha are a party guest, you know you're at the great banquet. God is now calling you to be a party host. Where can you be a party host? Where can you extend the invitation to the kingdom of God's banquet? Who is God calling you to invite? Maybe the place you need to start is with your own family or your extended family and work on reconciliation there. Maybe it's your neighbors that are kind of grouchy. Maybe it is reaching across political, racial, or religious divides to someone who doesn't think like you 
or worship like you. You know, this parable might seem about like it's about judgment, but it's really one of grace. We see God's grace spilling over and inviting everyone, regardless of who they are. All we have to do is accept the invitation from Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Gracious God, I ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to invite others to your great banquet, that we might know again and might share with others your great love for them. In your son's name, amen. Would you join with me in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I know, I messed up. Now we're going to sing hymn number 426 in the blue, Lord, speak to me that I may speak. Speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Oh, lead me, Lord, that I may lead the wandering and the wavering feet. Oh, feed me, Lord, that I may feed Thy hungering ones with manna sweet. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach The precious things Thou dost impart And wing my words that they may reach The hidden depths of manna's room. Oh, fill me with thy fullness, Lord, until my very heart o'erflows in kindred thought and glowing word, thy love to tell, thy praise to show. Oh, use me, Lord, use even me, just as thou wilt and when and where, until Blessed face I see, thy rest, thy joy, thy glory share. All right, this is a time when we share joys or concerns that we have as a church family. Um, first of all, Tom is going to start by showing um, pictures from Prince of Peace Presbyterian Church in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. This is our sister congregation that we have helped um, build their church, literally, uh, for 17 years. And um, we sent down a thousand, Covenant sent down a thousand dollars to help because so many of them are employed in the tourist industry down there, which is non-existent right now. Um, and the money we sent uh, paid for medicine for three families and food baskets for 45 families of the church. And uh, here's a couple thank yous from them to Knox. Hello, Pastor. Thank you very much for sending help to our families. We all have no work and livelihood is very difficult now. We thank God for him putting this help in your heart. It is a blessing. Thank you very much, Lupita. 
Thank you very much. We are so grateful. I have not had a job for two months, and my parents neither. But thank God he puts our daily bread on the table. It has been a great help for us to have this food. Thank you, Pastor. Greetings to your family, to your church. Please thank them, and God bless you. Area, is that her name? Area? Areli. And then from Sophia, I give thanks to God for your church and the generosity it has shown to our church. It has been such a blessing to have your donation for our whole church, Prince of Peace. We receive it with gratitude. God bless you, and may he prosper you in everything. A very strong hug to you all. We love you. So it really helped. 45 families. Another praise. I got this yesterday in the mail from the Outreach Foundation. There's a Presbyterian church located in Caraba. It's about 20 miles outside of Damascus. Presbyterian church, friends. Uh, One of the many terrorist groups operating in Syria during the war had overrun this largely Christian town in 2014. The faithful flock was in exile. Um, And then this week... Caraba Village was liberated from all, um, actually this was on May 6th. Caraba Village was liberated from all rebels under the intervention of the Russian Legion. It was a peaceful one and pressure led to an agreement. The village was evacuated from occupiers and the houses were handed back to the Christians in the presence of their clergy. And um, the church had a lot of damage, but the cross... Uh, was not damaged at the church. And so they've had their first worship service in that location. That's an amazing uh, thing. Other praises. Bob Gaskell's granddaughter, Avis Foster, graduated with a master's in technical writing. A thank that uh, SpaceX launch yesterday. I hope, did you guys see it? It was really cool. I only saw the afterwards. And Davin Peterson said that 40 interns um, are working from home for uh, the um, Library of Congress. Healing. Uh, The Shellnets who attend the 11 o'clock service, Chip and Janet, are having eye issues. Uh, Bereavement. Darlene Hoisington's brother passed away yesterday. Prayers for the family. We're going to pray for... um, our, our African sisters and brothers affected by this past week, and also prayers for first responders, for police departments who have been working so hard to bring about racial reconciliation, and prayers for pro- protesters and police uh, also. Would you join with me in prayer? Holy One, whose spirit is poured out upon all flesh, whose children you empower to prophesy, whose youth see visions and whose elders dream dreams. We cry out to you with a loud hosanna. Where else shall we go, O Savior? All else has failed us. You alone have the words of eternal life. You came that we might have life more abundantly, but that abundance eludes too many of us. O God, and hate and bigotry are ever-present. Our news cycles are filled with despair. Our hearts ache as we wade through a global pandemic, reaching grim milestone after grim milestone. But even as we navigate a new threat, old ones still linger. Communities of color bear the uneven weight of a new disease, yet we see that racialized violence and the systemic injustice undergirding it have by no means given way to the demands of a pandemic. We speak some of the most recent names, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and Tony McDade. Oh, God, we pray for forgiveness. We pray for your power, not the power of this world, but the power of your Holy Spirit to come upon us, our land, and heal our divisions. Bring about justice. Bring about your love. 
bring about your peace, not silence. And where we can help to bring your kingdom, let it begin with each of us. There are things that we are grateful for this day. We thank you, God, for graduations, for Avis Foster's graduation, for a Presbyterian congregation in Syria worshiping in their place of worship, for the SpaceX launch, for our sister congregation, Prince of Peace Presbyterian Church, for all of those who are able to work from home. We pray for healing, for the shell nuts with their eye issues, for Mary and Luce's sister, Patty, back in the hospital with some complications with her recovery from heart surgery. We pray, oh God, for uh, the Hoisington family, or Darlene's brother, and ask that you will give them your strength and peace during this difficult time. We lift up all first responders as well for police departments who have worked so hard to bring about reconciliation. We pray that this evening will bring an end to violent protests. Open our hearts and minds and understanding to your movement in the margins so that when your people speak, they are indeed heard. And when they tell the truth about your deeds of power, they are not dismissed as something other than sober and of clear mind. In this way, let the fires of uprising give way to the fires of your spirit, where your people hear the good news of your kingdom, hear it with joy, and make haste to take part in it. Let us release our attachment to our current world order and walk bravely into the world you've intended for us. For we pray it in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To this end, um, the facilities teams are looking at ways to uh, make sure your, your uh, a comfort level when you return is at a level that we can, or you can agree with, and that we are looking at cleaning the carpets, which haven't been done in a while. We're looking at a general cleaning of the areas in addition uh, to ensure that a God from whom all blessings flow.
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Would you join with me in the prayer of dedication? Generous God, thank you for the gifts you bestow upon us daily. May we be aware of each blessing that comes our way and create in us the constant desire to be blessings for others. Bless what we bring before you, we pray, through Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I Danced in the Morning. I know it's a favorite of a lot of yours. Number 302 in the blue hymnal. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee But they would not dance and they would not follow me I danced for the fishermen, for James and John They came with me and the dance went on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said it was a shame They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when they were black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leap up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Would you join with me in our worship, our Bible verse for the year, Jeremiah 29, 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good and safe week. Amen.